The movie begins in the aftermath of the battle at Sinhung Ni, which leads the Chinese People's Volunteer Army 7th Company 12 kilometers from Haga Ru Ri as they come across the 20th Corps and the Artillery Battalion of Commander Yang. He informs them they will engage the airfield and American 1st Marine Division supply base as they reunite using stolen American vehicles and equipment. Before departing, Commander Wu Qinli informs Yang of Lei Suisheng's passing, saddening him. Meanwhile, U.S. carriers transport Douglas A-1 Sky Raiders at the Sea of Japan, targeting PVA units advancing on Hagaru Ri from nine directions. Some Navy Vought F-4U Corsairs spook the 7th Company, trekking the snowy path. Luckily, everyone survives the strafe after scattering. Realizing the planes are headed for Yang's battalion, Commander Wu hurriedly moves his men forward. Not long after, bombs fall from the sky, inflicting maximum damage on the artillery battalion column and destroying all the ammunition. The 7th Company arrives, and Yang tells Commander Wu and the 7th Company to acquire more guns 1.5 kilometers away. The commander follows, happily lending him a pistol before rallying the men to the battlefield. Once at the U.S. perimeter at Hagaru Ri, the men engage with PVA soldiers, with some sacrificing themselves onto a barbed wire fence so that their soldiers can jump on their backsides to attack the American trenches. While getting the upper hand by killing many enemy soldiers, Sniper Ping he uses a bazooka to disable a US machine gun outpost, sending the American flag flying into the sky. After capturing the US artillery, the Chinese soldiers start bombing the Hagaru Ri airfield. Their efforts alarm 1st Marine Division Commander, Major General Oliver P. Smith, receiving news that they will be sieged by PVA units. While ordering an evacuation and demanding the runway is cleared out, he contacts General Douglas MacArthur, who attends a festivity in Tokyo. The Major General informs him about the situation, requesting reinforcements to cover his troops' withdrawal from the line. A resilient MacArthur disagrees and angrily demands to belay his actions considered treasonous. Moments later, as the U.S. base gets bombarded, Smith watches as their C-47 Skytrain aircraft explodes, forcing him to order the soldiers to focus on fortifying the Sumun Bridge and clear the route before ordering them to retreat from an overrun Hagaru Ri. Simultaneously, at the 9th Corps headquarters at Chengfang Dong, Deputy Commander Song Shilin is debriefed about the 7th Company's efforts driving out the U.S. Marines, who are retreating across the Sumun Bridge. Later, while sweeping the area, Ping orders the men to disengage from the fighting to barricade Sumun Bridge, preventing the U.S. soldiers from leaving. The men, including the commander's younger brother, Wu Wanli, rest and eat while the platoon's officials record the number of casualties with the identity tags left behind during the fight. Afterward, Commander Wu buries the tags and leaves his cigarette perched on the snow to honor the fallen. The commander takes refuge in a tower outpost, receiving the radio order to destroy Sumun Bridge. At the White House, President Harry S. Truman reads MacArthur's telegram asking permission to use atomic bombs for the fight, unable to clarify his decision while answering the media's questions. Elsewhere, the 7th Company endures frigid conditions as they locate the 9th Company attacking the American troops on the bridge. They join forces, rescuing the 9th Company survivors. By morning, Commander Wu counts the dead while the two companies barely recuperate as they succumb to eating frozen food. Suddenly, their peaceful reprieve is disrupted when U.S. aerial bombers blanket the snowy region with explosives, causing the men to hide. Feeling assured of victory, the American forces rebuild the bridge and refortify their strongholds to prepare for a counterattack. With the odds now against them, the Chinese troops devised a more strategic plan based on their earlier attempts on the bridge. Not long after, a scout from the 9th Company returns to their hideout detailing the U.S. base of operations. The 9th Company commander declares the bridge must be destroyed before succumbing to a wound after getting shot the night before. While the troops grieve and reminisce about the old days, the American officials get debriefed on the situation. The captain seeks to lure the Chinese onto the south end of the bridge to squash the platoon. Meanwhile, Commander Wu instructs the two companies to engage the bridge from four different directions, the north entrance, the south end, the pump house led by Ping, and the U.S. headquarters, where the commander will team up with his brother and another soldier, Yu Kongrong, as a raiding party. Ping confesses his failure to save Commander Bailey before their mission, with Wanli solidifying their brotherhood. Commander Wu gives his brother parting words of encouragement to help him prepare for their fight. Later, at sunset, the Chinese troops salute north towards China, taking pride in their homeland before splitting up to execute the plan under darkness. Once there, the troops crawl on the snow to avoid the watchtower's searchlights. Sensing a trap, Commander Wu sends Xiao Leoxi to the bridge's north side. He gets shot but saved by one of the platoon's snipers, who also shoots out a searchlight. Afterward, Wanli throws a grenade at the U.S. communications blockhouse, initiating the attack at the South Watchtower. With the American forces waiting to spring the trap, 
the PVA forces blow a hole in the pipeline to launch the bazooka, causing an explosion at the pump house that catches the soldiers off guard. Almost immediately, Tian Xiang Nan and two others take over the pump house, scouting the area before detonating explosives that incapacitate the enemy soldiers sent by their commander to investigate. While the U.S. forces rain down artillery fire, other Chinese soldiers rush to the pump house but encounter a grenade that gets deflected through the sacrifice of one of the men. They retaliate with a bazooka, killing some U.S. soldiers in a shootout. Simultaneously, Commander Wu bravely attacks the South Fort and eliminates the guards, forcing the American captain and his officials to leave the bunker after it gets fired at accidentally. Commander Wu corners the men, not knowing a bomb has been detonated inside the headquarters. The explosion flings the Americans onto the snow while the commander survives, searching the burning debris for the U.S. captain. Meanwhile, the PVA destroys the storage units in the pump house to seize the upper section, causing another shootout from the rooftop. Outside, the bridge's north section is hit with mortar fire, allowing the PVA to charge forward and overrun the area. During their invasion, Wanli disables the machine gun outpost with a grenade. Yukon Grong then saves him from a sniper, seemingly dying from getting shot. More pressure is placed on the north side when the U.S. forces send a tank and reinforcements to attack the overtaken outpost, killing some of the PVA soldiers. Amid an intense shootout, Wanli skirmishes with the U.S. captain as he attempts to throw a grenade. The captain is about to overpower him when Commander Wu appears, holding him at gunpoint. Wanli inserts the grenade inside the captain's jacket, killing him, though the commander realizes he was supposed to be captured alive. Elsewhere, several PVA soldiers are burnt to death with flamethrowers. Fortunately, they shoot a gas can that leaks the petrol underneath the U.S. soldiers, burning them alive after they fire the flamethrowers. Meanwhile, while the U.S. soldiers are firing above the pump house, Wanli and Commander Wu rescue Yu, surviving, thanks to his thick helmet. Later, the men intercept the Americans' recoilless rifle to shoot directly at the heavy tank advancing across the bridge, only to fail, forcing Ping to blast the walls to get a better view of the tank. Simultaneously, Commander Wu charges at the pump house, tackling the enemy soldier on the roof to fall inside. Taking matters into his own hands, one of the PVA soldiers carries a satchel charge outside, only to get repeatedly shot by the tank, killing him when the satchel explodes. Ping, who witnessed the tragedy, gets impaled by an enemy soldier but is saved by Commander Wu, who strangles the soldier until they fall to the ground. Ping grabs another satchel and dives under the tank, getting his arm crushed. Preparing to die, he shouts at the commander to fire at the charge, destroying the tank and trapping Wu in the wreckage. Units advance at his position but fail to recover the survivors. Suddenly, the 1st Marine Division vanguard approaches the north side and opens fire, forcing Commander Wu to blow his whistle and signal a retreat. Fortunately, Wanli rescues his brother from the rubble, escaping through the pipeline. The following morning, Yu uses a radio above the hillside to call for help when he sees F4U Corsairs approaching, awakening the survivors. Thinking quickly, he draws their attention as they drop napalm bombs in the snow, heroically sacrificing himself to spare the platoon. Unfortunately, the aircraft strafe the valley once more, wounding some of the men, including the commander, and killing others. Meanwhile, the U.S. Marines begin the three-day-long bridge repair so their forces can cross the other side. Unbeknownst to them from below, the PVA soldiers exhaust the derelict tank for supplies and ammunition. Elsewhere, at the Daiichi building in Tokyo, General MacArthur is informed of the aftermath of the Suman Bridge attack. Since the United Nations opposed the A-bomb plan, he ordered to speed up the bridge repair. Meanwhile, the PVA revives an abandoned USM-3 half-track vehicle to get to the bridge. While Mei Sheng recovers, he recalls his wife telling him to return alive. Wanli receives his brother's whistle, which he will use to distract the US forces by blowing it from either end every three hours. While this happens, Commander Wu quietly sneaks around the bridge unnoticed. Music is played to drown out the noise, but Wanli whistles again to signal the attack, with Mei setting the cargo in the half-track on fire, driving it towards the bridge to cause an explosion. Commander Wu slides to the pump house roof with the pipeline barricaded, landing near the raiding party. Ginli misfires at the artillery shell and falls, only to shoot several more rounds until it penetrates, causing a massive explosion that blows another hole in the bridge. He is saved by his brother but ultimately succumbs to his wounds and dies heroically. Remembering Wu's words, he sits close to him, freezing himself by dawn. U.S. Marines appear, and Wu's body gets burned by the flamethrower before sliding down the hill. Miraculously, the heat helps Wanli regain consciousness, awakening at the sight of U.S. helicopters flying above to deliver spans for the bridge. Later, the U.S. troops cross the other side when Major General Smith spots a red scarf on a tree, believing it is a warning sign. By December 24, 
the U.S. 10th Army prepare to destroy rail lines and strategic supplies before evacuating Hungnam port. A forlorn soldier writes something on a whiskey bottle about the Battle of the Suman Bridge. Smith goes to a mass grave, paying his respects to his fallen troops. Elsewhere, a weak Wanli fires his weapon to draw the attention of the 7th Company to rescue him. He salutes them, speechless about his comrade's fate. Returning to the port, bombs are detonated to destroy the city while the U.S. Marines retreat in their ships. On Christmas Day, the PVA's 9th Corps, including Wanli, victoriously run across the desolate ruins of Hungnam, cheering and waving their red flags on the beach. Later, at Lake Changjin, Deputy Commander Song removes his officer's hat, shedding a tear while bowing his head toward the setting sun. Wanli grabs a fistful of dirt and wraps it in a cloth. Moments later, the PVA gathers the reports on the casualties of the war at a military outpost, as the badges of the martyrs are stored in crates. Wanli is the only one out of the 157 soldiers of the 7th Company to report for duty. He catches Song's attention, agreeing to the young man's wish to restore the 7th Company. Song presents him with a flag he graciously accepts before departing. The movie ends as Wanli holds an urn of Commander Wu's ashes and tearfully imagines him on the road, getting advice about skipping stones before returning to his village. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.